Hey everybody, welcome back. This is second installment of my digital videos, and this is going to be a non sequitur video. So if you haven't seen the first one of those, it's called Happy Trees, and you should definitely go give it a look. Alright guys, today what we're going to be doing is taking a look at the skateboard that I purchased online. So first, let me take out my box opening tool. got here is a 42 inch longboard from Mammy Gall and what it has on the underside is the Union Jack and the Union Jack is the flag of the United Kingdom and while the United Kingdom has produced some great bands I don't want that on the underside of my skateboard all right brief disclaimer to this video I have I have no resentment to England. I don't dislike them at all or any way. And the only reason that I want this flag off the bottom of my board is because I have absolutely no ties to the country. So what we're gonna be doing is replacing it with a little rendition of the Stars and Stripes that I came up with. Another thing, if you think about it, the Union Jack is kind of like the watermark that Britain puts on all their colonies. For example, there's the Australian flag, the New Zealand flag, and the Cook Island flag. After I ordered the longboard, it only took me a few days to decide what I was going to put on the bottom of it. And I had the design all the way done and ready inside my head, and I had it sketched out before the board even came in the mail. But it took me, I think it was about two months before I even started actually working on painting it. This seems to be a pattern with me. I think I'm a chronic procrastinator. But that didn't stop me. I started working on it a few days prior and finished the board the night before I moved out to my dorm. And it is at college where the strange saga with my longboard begins. I was pretty stoked to be able to ride around on campus. There were marked off areas for bike lanes and skateboard lanes, and the sidewalk in general was just a lot better to ride on than the sketchy black top and chip and seal out in the middle of nowhere where I live. I was riding around having a grand old time and it was a great way to get from place to place and just a lot of fun in general. But there was one place that tripped me up slightly. So on the sidewalk there were pieces of metal, just like big square slabs, and I believe their purpose was to prevent people from driving up the sidewalk in order to get right next to the door while they were dropping off the stuff for their dorm. But anyway, so this slab of metal was at least an inch and a half thick, and it was just sitting there on the ground to prevent people from going over it, I guess. And I was riding along, and I thought if I leaned back on my board and put my weight behind the front wheels, that I could pop up onto it as opposed to stopping and then getting back on my board after I had passed the metal slab. Well, thank you to Newton's first law of motion, we're gonna play a little game and see if you can guess what happened next. When your favorite YouTuber hit the slab, did he A, stop, B, roll backwards with the board, or C, absolutely eat it and land on the floor embarrassing himself? Ding, 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 we have a winner. If you guessed C, you are absolutely correct. The board stopped moving and I didn't. I ate it on the floor, and luckily there was nobody around to see it, but it hurt my ego nonetheless. Even with this event, all was well and good, I continued to ride around in all that jazz. But one day, I noticed that my longboard was nowhere to be found. So I searched high and low, and then I realized what probably happened was the night before, I had a bunch of stuff to carry into my dorm, and I set my longboard by the door so I didn't overcarry and drop everything on the way up the stairs and I was going to go back and get it, but I must have forgotten. So it sat out there overnight, and somebody undoubtedly snagged it. So for the next week or so, I was completely without a board, and that definitely made the trips to and from class take a lot more time. So I decided that I would order one to replace my stolen board online. I forgot to mention, the first thing that I did when I realized it was stolen was I reached out to all my friends on campus and also the longboarding club on campus to let them know what the situation was just to 
just to keep an eye out, because I was hopeful that I could still recover it. Well, one day I had pretty well and good given up hope on finding it, so I was at a club meeting a couple blocks away from my dorm, and some of my buddies were walking around, and I got a Snapchat from one of them that said, Hey, are, are you still missing that longboard? And I said, Yeah, I, I am. Well, I should have been smart enough to deduce that the only logical reason to ask such a question would to be that he found it. So when he sent a follow-up Snapchat, I didn't open it right away because I was busy with the club meeting. Well, I definitely should have just stepped aside and opened it and responded, because what it was was, well, I think I found it. Is this yours? Like, like it would make sense. And it was a picture of one of the other guys holding the board up to the camera, and it was mine. So... I opened that about 45 minutes later, and I said, oh my goodness, yes, that's mine, please grab it. And I was frantically Snapchatting him because I wanted to make sure he went back and got it, and I was just desperate because I didn't want it to be gone when I got back from the club meeting and missed my one opportunity to recover it. And luckily he went back to get it, and it was still there, so he gave it to me when I got back from the club meeting and I was just ecstatic to have it back. Well guys, thank you for watching this far into the video. Uh, I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed the process and also I hope you enjoyed the story. The moral of this story is don't leave stuff sitting unlocked outside where people can steal it. Adios.